Our nation's power infrastructure is rapidly aging, and many of the components and systems are operating well past their expected life cycle. With higher demands and extreme weather patterns taxing the grid, we're beginning to see an increase in power grid failures across the nation. So what can we practically do to prepare your home should the grid continue to fail with a higher frequency? In this video, I'm gonna walk you through my personal home power backup system that can really function independently of the grid through a combination of solar panels, batteries, and a standby propane generator that's tied to my home, I can actually power the essentials should the grid go offline for an extended period of time. And the best thing is that this system will pay for itself in just a few years, which will save me a large amount of money over the next several years. There's a lot to cover in this video, so let's go ahead and jump in. If you're new to this channel, my name is Chris, and on this channel we discuss emergency preparedness, aka prepping. If you follow my channel for any length of time, you've seen various videos where I've covered smaller battery backup systems that are commonly referred to as solar generators. And you can hook them up to solar panels, you can charge them, and then power a few essential electronics in your home. And the great thing is they're portable, but they're not really capable of powering a home if the grid goes down which the setup that I'm about to detail does handle. And just as important to me is the setup's financial savings over the long haul, which I'm gonna detail more in this video. Now, I've had a solar battery system tied into my home for a little over a year now, so I've gotten to know it reasonably well. What I'll do in this video is cover the following. We'll go over the overview of my setup and I'll detail the core components. I'll walk you through an example of how I use this daily with power arbitrage and how this would actually perform if the grid were to fail. We'll cover the heart of this setup, the Saluna S12, in detail. I'll detail the ROI, or return on investment. We'll look at federal and state rebates, and just the overall cost. And at the very end of this video, I'm gonna share my thoughts and a note about setting expectations with a system like this. So here's a high level overview of my setup. If at any time you want to check out any of the products that I'm going to show in this video, I'll post links in the description and comments section below. There are three main components of this system. First is the solar panels, which provide me with unlimited renewable power as long as the sun is shining. There's the inverter, the charge controller, and battery system, which convert the incoming current from the solar panels and then store it in the batteries, which can then be sent to my home or the grid. Then there's a backup power source, in this case, a dual fuel generator that I run on propane. Should I need to charge the batteries if the weather really prevents the solar panels from being operational, or if I need a little more power at night. Okay, so now that we've covered the three main core components that go into this system, here are slightly more details. In the summer of 2021, I had a 7.5 kilowatt solar array added to my roof. The solar array is connected to the saloon in my garage, and this system is really the heart of this whole operation. It has an eight kilowatt hybrid split phase inverter built in, which channels the DC power coming from the solar panels into either the batteries, the house, or the grid. The saloon can store 11.5 kilowatt hours of energy in three separate lithium iron phosphate batteries. And the power going to the house from this device, it ends up going through a smart panel that powers a few primary circuits in my house that I really wanna power if the grid were to go down. With this smart panel, I can actually control and monitor circuits through an app on my phone. I also added a dual fuel generator, which is connected to the Saluna, should the weather prevent the solar panels from charging the batteries, or again, if I just need a little extra power at night. All right, so I know I've thrown a lot of information at you. What does this practically mean for someone starting out looking to set up their house with a similar setup as mine? Instead of just throwing out additional information, let's walk through the two primary uses for this setup. The first example is if the grid goes down, and the second example is my daily usage of this device. Let's start off by discussing the emergency use aspect of this system. If there's a utility power outage, the Saluna automatically disconnects your home's electrical system from the grid and then provides you power to your home from the batteries. Your solar panels can keep generating energy from the sun and then store it in the batteries, which, as you guessed, get fed into your home. It's also worth noting that most homes with solar 
are set up on what's called net metering, which means you're powering the grid and not your home. So when the grid goes down, most people are often surprised that their house has no power, even though they have solar panels installed. If their grid were to go down, the Saluna can automatically detect this. It then disconnects from the grid and then puts your home in an off-grid mode, which allows it to receive power from the batteries, which again, are charged from the solar panels. And once a grid comes back up online, the Saluna will automatically reestablish a connection to the grid. Really, it's an intelligent system that handles everything for you automatically. All right, so let's run this through a test showcasing these features. What I'll do is I'm gonna show you an example where I flip off the circuit breakers to the house. So at this point, the house is now disconnected from the grid. Looking at the Saluna screen, we see that it's charging the batteries from solar and power is going into the house. But what will be powered in the home? Well, what ultimately gets powered in the house is determined by the lines that we set up on our sub panel that is connected to the smart panel. You can power more power intensive devices in the house, such as your air conditioner with this system. But when I set this up, I personally decided to only power critical devices to conserve power for what I thought is most important to me. And let's take a look in the house to see what's actually still running after I shut off the power coming from the grid. Here are a few examples. I have a refrigerator, which is a very important thing for me. And as you can see, it's still operating. Many of the wall sockets, my office computer and lights, hallway lights, and then the kitchen. It's worth noting that if the grid goes down, you don't really notice as the system serves as a UPS or uninterrupted power source. I can also selectively control any lines I choose to receive electricity if I want to conserve power. And I can do this through my app, which connects to the Lumen Smart Panel. As shown here, I turn off the circuit providing power to my closet's lights, and then they go out. I can then turn them back on as shown. With some proper power rationing, I can power what I need during the day and then go to the essentials overnight when the power is out, such as a refrigerator and some other miscellaneous wall plugins. As I mentioned earlier, I also have a backup dual fuel generator should we experience inclement weather, or again, if we just need a little extra power at night. Now, at the moment, I just set up this shed with the generator and I'm gonna convert it into a quiet box here in a few weeks. So subscribe to the channel if you wanna be alerted when that video comes out, which I'll detail how I went about setting that up. All right, with solar and a battery backup system, you now have the primary advantage of not drawing attention to your home if the grid goes down as you don't wanna to have to run a noisy generator. While I do have a propane generator, once I finish the quiet box, it should be barely noticeable. In my neighborhood, I would say about 75% or more of the homes have solar panels installed on the roofs. So for me, having solar doesn't really draw any attention. Additionally, there's no maintenance with the Saluna and solar panel setup versus an internal combustion engine or ice generator. An ice generator requires such things as oil changes, tune-ups, along with a lot of other miscellaneous updates that are often needed. With these type of generators, you're really limited to the amount of fuel that you can store on hand, whereas a battery system like this tied to solar panels really effectively has an infinite power source. And still, the Saluna will be continually replenishing itself, and if necessary, it can be charged with a carbon-based fuel generator if you really need to do so. So, I really have the best of both worlds here. Now, regarding daily use, as a result of having solar installed, our cost per kilowatt of power we use, it actually gets reduced from 33 cents to 21 cents. Now, this is specific to our power company, which offers this type of deal for having a whole home battery system installed. But here's where things get really interesting. From four to 9 p.m. each weekday, our power company, which is Southern California Edison, they end up doubling the rate per kilowatt to 54 cents. That's obviously extremely high, but because we have a battery system, we get to utilize what's referred to as power arbitrage. What this means is that we charge the batteries when the rates are low at 21 cents per kilowatt, but then we sell that power back to the grid between 4 and 9 p.m. at 54 cents per kilowatt. So, as you can imagine, this benefits us significantly when it comes to our power bill. We buy low and then we sell high. And if you look here, you can see during normal times when the sun is up, powering our solar array, our net power use is negative. And if you look here, you're gonna notice that our combined net power usage during the peak hours between four and 9 p.m. is also negative because we're dumping our batteries back into the grid. 
On average, we end up producing more power than we consume, so between the solar panels and battery setup, our electricity bill is next to nothing. And we're gonna talk about ROI or return on investment a little bit later in the video. So let's jump into the details of this Luna, which is really the heart of this setup. If you wanna check out this device, I'll post a link in the description section along with a coupon code City Prepping. The Saluna S12 model I've installed, it's a collaboration between Energy and the Saluna Battery Company, a relationship between two companies that have been in works for several years and now are being rolled out in the US market. To start with, it is actually UL certified. Without this certification, you're not gonna qualify for state and federal rebates, you won't be approved to connect it to the grid, and most electricians will not assist in the installation as it actually could impact their license. So keep that all in mind if you're shopping for these type of systems. I had a professional electrician install this and we went through my city for permitting to enable me to feed power to the grid through this device. Here are some of the technical specifications about the Saloon S12. It has an eight kilowatt inverter, it has an 11.5 kilowatt battery bank. You can output up to eight kilowatts maximum and it can handle a surge of 12 kilowatts. It's 52 inches tall, 22 inches deep and 30 inches wide, and it weighs 660 pounds. So you're not gonna be able to pack this up if you have to head out, it's not mobile. And with the batteries being lithium iron phosphate, the manufacturer states that it can cycle 6,000 times to an 80% depth of discharge or DOD, which could translate to roughly about 16 years of life. And here's one other advantage of a system like this. You can connect this up to an existing solar array. Some companies such as Tesla, they're requiring that you use both their solar and battery systems together, but this can actually tie into an existing solar setup. The other thing is that Energy is working with EMP Shield to create the only EMP proof whole home battery backup system. And they're gonna be rolling out that connection shortly. Again, I'll post a link to all this below if you wanna check this out. I will tell you up front that the entire system was very expensive. But when looking at it from an ROI and rebate perspective, it for me personally made a lot of sense. And let me explain. When I mapped out the setup with my solar installer, we had to factor in the average annual cost increase in our electricity. I had to look at my average usage of power for a year and the direction the house faces, which ultimately determines the efficiency of the panels installed on the roof. We looked at federal and state rebates and several other factors. Now, from all that information, from all these values, we were able to determine that the system would pay for itself in roughly four and a half years. And if I didn't have solar for those four and a half years, I'd have to spend the same amount of money that I pay for this setup on my electricity bills. These panels are rated for roughly 20 years. So after about four and a half years, I'll have roughly 15 years of free electricity, which in the end will save me somewhere in the six figures in electricity costs over that period of time. It's also worth noting that if you do live in California as I do, you need to look up NIM 3.0. This is gonna have a huge impact on those looking to get solar installed anytime soon on their home. Really in a nutshell, the state is incentivizing people to move to home batteries for power arbitrage during peak hours, as I explained earlier in the video. Additionally, federal rebates were 26% for my solar panels. Regarding rebates for the battery system, again, you're gonna to need to check with your state. I'll also post a link in the description section to the site where you can really determine the rebates for your state. Plus, you can also contact Energy directly and they're gonna walk you through all this. I'll post our information below. With my power provider, we do qualify for rebates for our battery system. Plus, as I stated earlier, it drops our rate per kilowatt used from 33 cents to 21 cents which is a substantial saving. Admittedly, I didn't factor the cost of the Saluna into my overall cost, as this particular system was provided to me free of charge for review. But based on the fact that it dropped my per kilowatt rate and we were able to sell back power to the grid during peak hours at a higher price point than what I actually paid for it, it does put money back into my pocket and really serves the primary purpose of having a backup power source. So having explained the ROI and the rebates on this system, I was, personally able to justify the overall cost. Here are the costs before the rebates. The solar panels and the insulation, that came to 24,000. The Saluna is 13,500. 
the Lumen Smart Panels 2000. And the backup generator and shed setup, which I'm gonna build out, is roughly about $2,000. So my entire setup comes to about 42,000. With the federal rebates for the solar panels and the Saluna, both of which receive a 26% rebate, it brings the overall price to 31,000. There are some items that you buy for emergency preparedness that you may never really actually get to use. Then there are systems like this that you use on a daily basis that actually provide you with savings and are on standby if you need them for an emergency. Of all the products that I've ever reviewed, the Saluna is by far the most practical for my day-to-day -day use and at the same time, it does save me money. This entire setup that I've explained in this video is designed to provide a reliable power source. It helps me manage my energy needs to save me money. It makes blackouts and power grid failures irrelevant, and it does provide a continuous uninterrupted energy flow. It's both practical when the grid is up and when it is down. Before I jumped into getting this set up, I admittedly was on the fence about the cost, but in the long run, it saves me a substantial amount of money each month. Plus, it gives me peace of mind knowing that if we have a power outage, we're gonna be all right. Again, I'll post a link in the description section to the items that I covered in this video along with the coupon code for the Saluna. At the time of releasing this video, Energy does have Saluna in stock, so there's no wait if you wanna pick up one of these. But before I finish the video, let me say something about expectations. In America, as a general rule, we have not had to experience power outages on a regular basis and extreme energy prices over the last several decades. And I believe that's about to change as energy prices keep going up and the grid is getting older and overloaded. And at the same time, I'm trying to provide some insight for a friend of mine in Texas at the moment who is getting proposals for a whole home solar and battery system, kind of like what I outlined in this video. But the quotes that he's getting are roughly four times the size and the cost as the one that I just showed. And he's wanting standby power available to power the majority of his house including air conditioners if the grid were to go down. I have a 3,600 square foot house and trying to run both air conditioners to cool the house would require a lot of power. And it's not cheap if you wanna power everything as you'll need a large system. As I mentioned, I did not include our air conditioners as part of our standby power. Running these off the Saluna, it is possible, but it would drain the batteries quickly. If I want more batteries and more solar to power energy intensive devices, in the end, it's gonna cost me a whole lot more. Having lived in third world nations, I've had to learn how to ration power. Retreating to just one room in a house, you can actually cool off with a portable air conditioner if the power goes down, is something many of us in this country have not really had to deal with. And I have had experience with this firsthand. I bring this all up because my system is enough to power essentials, but I don't expect it to power everything. If the power goes down for an extended time, the system I have in place will take care of us, but we'll have to confine ourselves to a smaller area within the house that we can climate control with the power that we have. If I wanna power everything, I'm gonna to have to shell out a lot of money for a much bigger system. Tell me what you think in the comments below. You can also post your questions in the comments and I'm gonna to try to answer them with a second video. And if you'd like to just see more detailed spec sheets for the Saluna, I'll put a link in the description and comment section below. And again, you're welcome to call the company that sells this energy and they can answer your questions. As always, stay safe out there.